Hi, in this video, I will talk about the CL Color Grids basics in 3D LUT Creator. Unfortunately, not many users use this tool for color correction. CL Grids can do things that cannot be done in other programs. If you haven't watched the video called Working Principle of AB and CL Color Grids in 3D LUT Creator, then you should take a look at it so that you can understand how CL Grids work. Long story short, the CL grids are the two vertically, mutually perpendicular planes of the cylinder that represents the working color model. The color of the image is projected onto these planes. The neutral passes through the middle of each grid. If you move away from the neutral, the color saturation will increase. However, do not forget that if you drag the points from one half of the grid to another over the neutral, the hue will also change. Unlike the AB grid, in CL grids, the user gets much more control over the brightness of the image. The brightness will change vertically. The darkest colors are at the bottom of the grid, while upper parts are brighter. To make the most accurate impact on the desired hue, you can choose what colors the CL grids will go through. To do this, select this eyedropper and click on the desired color in the image. The grids turn so that on the bottom grid, the selected color, in our case red, is located as far as possible from the neutral, and so that on the upper grid the color is projected as close to the neutral as possible. All methods of editing the grid and working with the nodes that I showed for the AB grid will also work for CL grids. Keyboard shortcuts work as well. I fix the points by clicking them. Points are selected one by one with the control key pressed down or with the selection frame. Or you can select points using arrows from the keyboard if you hold down the control and shift keys. On the Mac, you need to hold down the command key. You can pin all selected points by pressing control plus alt plus shift on the keyboard and clicking on any point among the selected ones. You can move the points by pressing the arrows on the keyboard. On Mac, you still need to hold down the command key. Also, CL grids allow you to change the hue. To do this, select the point or group of points, hold down the shift key, and drag the mouse up or down. You can reset the hue by holding down the shift key and clicking on the point with the right mouse button. The point positions will not change. Besides the Pin All Points button on the CL tab, there is also a button for pinning the neutrals. When you click on it, all the points of the neutral axis become fixed. This can be done in order to avoid coloring the neutral hues during the color correction. Let's take a look at the buttons located under the grids. The Reset Grid 1 and Reset Grid 2 buttons reset horizontal point movements on the respective grids, or in other words, they reset the saturation changes. For example, you need to make some color lighter. But when moving the points, you move them horizontally, that is, increased or decreased saturation. To reset only saturation, you can press Reset Grid 2. Horizontal points movements are reset. The brightness changes are preserved. The Reset Luminance button resets the changes of brightness on both grids. For example, you decided to increase the saturation of red but at the same time you move the grid vertically. Reset Luminance returns the initial vertical positions of points, that is, only brightness is reset. Saturation will not be reset. Let's consider how the smoothing of grids works. The buttons Smooth Grid 1 and Smooth Grid 2 smooth the horizontal positions of grid points, that is, the saturation is smoothed. Changes in brightness remain the same. I will move the group of points and try to smooth the top grid. Look at how the fixed neutral also move. In order to keep the neutrals at their place while smoothing the grid, you must hold down the control key. It works the same for the second grid. The Smooth Luminance button smooths only the vertical movements of the points on both grids. At the same time, the saturation changes are preserved. To keep the neutral as it is, you need to hold down the control key. 
When you press the Smooth button, the CL grids are smoothed. Both the brightness and the saturation are smoothed. In order to avoid changes in the neutral, it is necessary to hold the control key. Tools for working with the grid on the toolbar of the program will also work with the CL grids. The difference will only be that for the tools you will need to choose which of the grids, the upper or the lower, they will work with. I will select a tool that moves four points. Now I select the bottom grid. By clicking on the image, you can recolor the area you need. The color is on the border of the grid, so only two points are selected. I am going to click on the green color. There are four points here. I can select the top grid and select the same color there. The next tool can be used to move the points to the selected color. You can click on both the grid and the image. I choose the bottom grid. Now I will work on the top grid with this tool. You can use the next tool to select the desired color range in the image. While doing so, the points representing that color will appear on the grid. I select the red gradient portion. On the top grid, the neutral area was highlighted because I turned the grid and the red color is projected there. There is also a part on the lower grid that is responsible for the red color. It is to the right of the neutrals. Let's now look at how CL grids change color and what nuances should be taken into account. The main advantage of CL grids is the ability to work very finely with the brightness of color, depending on its hue and saturation. But at the same time, the chance to get artifacts on the image is higher than on the AB grid, where you mainly work with a hue and saturation. On the CL grids, when working with brightness, that is, with vertical movements of points, on smooth gradients of color, make sure that the points do not go behind each other. I will show this on the red gradient example. Let's try to lighten a small part on the gradient. I fix all the points. I select the point and move it up. It turns out that a darker shade jumps over the brighter one on the gradient and it forms a strip. Therefore, when changing brightness, try to move large ranges of points at once but do it smoothly. That is, in this case it was possible to fix only the neutrals and expand the points. Yes, you may get banding on this gradient because we increase the contrast within the same color, but there will not be a color jump in brightness. Also, pay attention to what colors a particular CL grid will influence. I'll try to make the red gradient neutral. I will move it in the direction of the neutral. Yes, red color has lost its saturation, but other colors have changed. This is because the CL grids work with color projections. And for this plane of the CL grid, in addition to red color, yellow and purple were also projected. Therefore, moving this part of the grid to the neutral, I also moved yellow and purple. For clarity, I will show you what is happening on the vector scope. But first, to fully match what is happening on the grids with the vector scope, I'll select the YUV working color model, as the vector scope works in this model. I'll repeat, on the vector scope, the red moved to the neutrals, the yellow moved to the green, and the purple one to the purple one. To make it even clearer, I'll do the same on the AB grid. I move yellow to the side of green, purple in the direction of violet, and red to neutral. Let's compare it now. Here's the CL grid, and there's the AB grid. If you move the second half of color grid to the neutral, you get only the colors shown in the upper grid, that is, green and violet. You can see that clearly on the vector scope. But take into account that you completely lost two colors, red and turquoise. I did not recolor them, but reduce them to neutrals. I'll try to create the same harmony on the AB grid, but I will recolor the red and turquoise to the hues we need. 
Those who watched tutorials on working with an AB grid know that to recolor the color, you need to move the points, or in this case, the color rays, between which this color is located. And that's what I am doing right now. On CL grids, this is not possible. I got such picture. On CL grids, I lost two colors. Of course, you can exclude the effect of CL grids on unnecessary colors, but for this, you will need to create a mask by color. This is possible in 3D LUT Creator. You can do this in the Mask tab. That's all. I hope this video has been useful to you. Do not be discouraged if you did not understand something. The video with the practice examples will be soon. Like and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned. Bye!